Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. In this video we'll be looking at how we can create a basic user interface within the Spark AR system using some simple animation frames, patch editor and some gesture controls. So as you can see here the effect we're going to try and build is this sort of uh, model where we can change the texture on our glasses in this case between one of three different colours, pink, green and orange using simple touch commands and the way we're going to do this is we're going to basically start from the very beginning so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly create a new project like so and what I'm going to want to do is import a 3D model for which our texture will be applied to so I'm just going to go to the AR library and I'm just going to search for these 3D glasses that I found this 3D model and import that into my project like so and now I'm going to it go to insert and I'm going to insert our face tracker like so so in my face tracker in my scene I'm going to drag my glasses onto my face tracker so they're now tracking and following the face I'm just going to adjust the scale of this quickly to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and just move these up the face a little bit and along the z-axis so they cover roughly where the eyes will be. Again if I want I could spend more time doing this properly I'm just going to do this fairly fast so this effect will be a little bit rough the way I'm building it but given more time we can get this more accurate. So what I'm going to need to do is I need to create some assets so what I've done is in Photoshop I have created these three little icons again very roughly done very quickly done nothing overly amazing and I've just saved these as UI1, UI2 and UI3 because we're going to import this as our sequence and in my other tab here I just created three blank materials so just a solid colour for the three colours that were presented to our icons here. It's important to note that I make sure that I saved UI1 with the pink glasses selected as this will be our first frame uh, uh, and I'll make sure that also on my material which is also going to be using animation that the pink material is also saved as 01 likewise with 02 with the blue on both and 03 on the orange on the, the same. So in Spark AR I'm going to oh, just make sure I have the right project open like so. I'm going to go to assets and import from computer and I'm going to navigate to my folder where I've saved my free materials and free icons already. So I'm just going to import my free colors as a sequence like so. This will create our color animation and our color texture and um, but I'm also going to go again to assets and import from computer and also import my free icons. Making sure again I keep the naming convention of sequential naming so 01, 02 and 03 and import them as a sequence again like so. And now what I need to do is I need to now attach my icon as a canvas image. So I'll go to insert, I'm going to insert a 2D object, in this case it's going to be our rectangle, insert like so, this will create a canvas and our rectangle shape and on this rectangle I am going to adjust its width to be approximately 400 by about 200ish, let's just see how that looks, scale that down a little bit more. So I'm just trying to get roughly uh, in proportion to what our image is. So I'm just going to now move this down. So I'm just going to go to my canvas and change it from mode screen space to mode world space. So this allows me to now move my uh, rectangle and canvas in a bit more control. So I'm going to move it, this entire thing down like so. And then on this rectangle I'm going to just quickly cre uh, create a new material. So with the rectangle selected go to material and click on the plus. Create new material 
and on my assets materials on this new default material i'm going to select the texture as our color animation uh, sorry our glasses icon animation and what this will do now is it will now loop continuously between my three icon images at the moment this obviously doesn't work the way we'd like it to so i need to click on my glasses icon animation and turn off loop like so and what we're going to do later on is we're going to need to add in some control for this. Well, whilst I'm here, I'm also going to go to Assets and create another new material. And I'm going to make sure that the texture on this one is our glass, uh, is our color animation. And then over on my glasses, I'm going to select my model. and make sure that the material that's set for the frame is now changed to be our new material, which again is an animation frame, which is cycling through those three colors. So again, I'm going to go to my color animation and turn off the loop. So at the moment, you should see that our icon and our glasses colors should match, but we've got no control to change between them. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to our canvas and we need to add in some planes because we need to add tap control. Now we can't add any tap control or gesture control to our 2D objects. We can only add them to our um, planes or 3D objects in a sense because they can actually detect um, collision essentially. So on my canvas I'm going to insert a plane like so. I'm going to adjust the scale of my plane to be roughly 10 by 10. And I'm going to now move this to be over the top of my first button. I might actually just bring this down a little bit just so it doesn't overlap with the next button in line. And I'm going to create a new material on this plane and with this new material I am going to just quickly rename it to be our button control material just so I know where things are. Likewise I'm going to change the name of my default material for my frames to be my frame material because it's always good to have naming conventions and likewise with my icons. Like so. So now on my button control uh, material, I want to make sure the render options transparency is set to zero because we don't actually want that to see. We just want it to act as collision. So if I select my plane object here, you'll notice that we have this option here called actions where we can add in a tap control and we'll do that in a bit. But first what we need to do is we need to now duplicate our plane object by pressing command D or control D and move this newly created plane uh, over to our second button, making sure that this is the same scale as our previous. As you notice there, we scaled it so it didn't actually duplicate and copy across the scale proportions. So bear that in mind when you're creating your own. And again, I'm just going to overlap this roughly over my image. Again, if you want to sort of make your life easy. If you go to a button control, we we'll just temporarily add some visibility just so we can make sure that we've got overla uh, overlapping correctly because we're going to, and then making sure that we turn this off afterwards. And on my plan, I'm just going to again, once more, duplicate it and scale this again to be eight by eight and move this over our third button like so. So now we have our three buttons selected. I can now actually turn off my material for my button control. And this is where I now need to start adding in some of our patch editor controls. So if I just quickly swap to my other project here and I open up the workspace patch editor just to show you, 
You can sort of see here how we have our three buttons linked to our object tap, uh, tap and we have an option switch which will actually affect our animation textures. So if I go back to my working project here, I'm going to select our first plane and I'm going to rename this to button one. Again, naming is uh, not super important, but it's good for your own mentality. So you know where you're, what you're doing if you ever need to come back to the project. There we go, button one, button two, and button three. And on button one, I'm going to go to actions and add a tap action. And you'll notice this brings up our patch editor. I'm going to go to button two and add another tap action for button two. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. And likewise with button three. Like so. And what I want to do now is I want this to be able to tell when this button is tapped for it to perform an action. So if I just quickly go to my preview window here in Simulator Touch and I tap these buttons, you'll notice that in the patch editor you can see this little light is firing to indicate that it's being selected. So I need to go and drag off from one of my object taps and I'm going to go with an option picker. I'm just going to simply insert that and link my first button. Let's just double check something. Seem, seem to want to. Ah, option switch. Okay. Sorry about that. It's very easy to get confused when there's so many uh, things out there. So I know it's option something. Option switch and insert that. And I'm going to drag option button one to set to zero, button two set to one, and button three set to two. You notice that we've only got four options within this option switch. So bearing in mind that can only really translate uh, to four for option, uh, four, well, five frames essentially. So your animation, or for this trick to work, you can, your animation texture can only have up to five frames or five toggles essentially. So if I now simply go over to my animations, so I'll go to my color animation and I click on current frame. And I also go to my glasses icon and click on the current frame under properties on there as well. Like so, and link these to my option switch patch. You'll now notice that it's now defaults back to frame uh, zero or frame one essentially. So now when I now tap the screen onto these different buttons, you can see how it's switching between the three frames or three options in a sense. Now it's also important to note that with this option switch, we could also link this to toggle the visibility. So we could actually tap it so when option when button one is pressed, whatever is linked from this object tap, we can toggle it to be turn things on and off or to play sound. This option switch only is really useful for animations, but these buttons here can now be linked to anything else. So at the moment, if we use the previous on our device and we took a picture, we would have this UI showing up, which we obviously wouldn't want. So what we can do is we can go over to our scene and to our camera drag that into our patch editor like so. And what we can do here is we can make sure that whenever a photo is captured, that this UI turns off. So to do that, we can just simply go to our canvas zero rectangle, which is essentially our UI interface in this case. And I can click on this little visibility uh, toggle here. And I just simply link up my photo captured to a not option because we want this obviously to be an invert. And I link photo captured to not, which will add in our switch for us already by default, which is super useful. And then link my not to the visibility on my user interface. So now if we was to previous this on our device, whenever we take a picture, this UI element will not be visible. So you can sort of see how you can build fairly easily a makeshift menu using Spark AR Studio. Please share your own effects below. 
and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And we will probably return to this in the future in newer builds and expand upon creating some more interactive effects. Thank you for watching.